Welcome back. Now, coming up, we've got a masterclass in chocolate mousse, and there'll be more dishes from chefs Richard Bertonet and Sat Baines very shortly. But first, I'm honoured to be joined at the house by the biggest solo star in British musical history, bar none. It's the brilliant Sir Cliff Richard OBE! <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. And, and oh cheers, cheers, cheers. Great Thank to you. see you. What a fantastic introduction. I can't wait to meet me. Because <laughs> I'm going to do you a... Because I know steak is, is a very special treat for you. Oh, yes, it is. So we're going to do steak with a simple little mushroom sauce, like a Dian sauce. We've got some lovely mushrooms. I'll explain those in a minute. We've got some beautiful sirloin steak, a few herbs, a bit of cream, some uh, uh, Dijon mustard and a nice little bit of stock. Really, really simple. I'm just going to get the steak on, so I'm going to salt this first of all. No black pepper, and we're going to get that in a nice hot pan with a little bit of oil. So, Sir Cliff, can I call you Cliff? Yes, of course you can. Where did it all go wrong? <laughs> Where did... I what know. point in your life, Wayne? <laughs> I've taken a wrong turn here. But you, yeah. Because, I mean, this is, this is... I mean, it's been amazing. Reading some of the stats. I, I'm going to remember these, because last night I was reading all about you. 1,300 records recorded. So I got that bit right. I think you did. Third biggest selling artist in British history in terms of the Beatles, Elvis, you. Me, and That's not a bad thing, is it? No, it's, it's fantastic considering that I did not have the largest market on the planet for records, and that was the USA. So had I made it in the States, the Beatles and Elvis would have to have watched out. <laughs> but 21 million albums sold in the UK alone, 250 million records sold worldwide. <laughs> that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> not, not for Cliff, for me, for remembering it all, to be honest yeah, with you. Well, I'm, I'm very impressed. Is he... I, I, it's just when you ask people about this, I remember interviewing uh, Jackie Collins once, and he was... Is it everything you thought it would be? Because when you were a young kid, you really, really wanted to be on stage with, with people screaming at you and... Yeah, it, but, but it became about because my friends and I were hanging out in Waltham Cross, which is in Hertfordshire, and this guy pulled up at the car, and we're looking at the car, it was one of those old Citroens, and we thought, oh, look at it, it's, it looked like it just landed from Mars. We're all saying we had to have one of these, and then we heard, since my baby left, I found it. And the guy drove off. He came and drove up, and we didn't know who it was. And we looked at each other, thinking, what the heck is this? And I believe that that's the moment that changed my life. But you were, I mean, you, you've gone from that when you were doing school. You, I mean, you, you, you were, how on earth? Because it happened to you very, very quickly in terms of the music business. You've done the, yeah, the clubs. Right. You got spotted in clubs, is that? Well, it, it, no, not really. I was spotted in a bar. And one night, this, I could see this guy. Standing on a bar, I looked like a you know, leather jacket on, and I thought it looks like a teddy boy. Anyway, he came up to us afterwards and he said, Here, he said, I can make you a star. And we all fell on the floor laughing. We, after we said, Oh, yeah, really? And then he said he knew somebody in London who ran or owned the Two Eyes Coffee Bar. Now, that ran bells with us because Tommy Steele had already started. He yeah. started there. So we're thinking, Oh. And of course, we're saying to ourselves, Well, we'll make it because we're better than them. Of course, we weren't better than them because we didn't make it there. We, but, but, it, but it was the start. And then how on earth did you then meet, I mean, the likes of Hank Marvin and all that sort of stuff? Because that was that the moment for you? Because yep. you'd never really... You, you, I mean, you were known, but not massive. Was... No, I made my first record without them, but they came from Newcastle, right. and they were coming to look, seek, seek their fortunes as guitarists. My then... The guy that said, I'll make you a star, went back and he said, I've, I've just seen this guy, he plays like James Burton. And I said, well, they'll come. And they came to my house in Chessant. We got guitars out and, you know, it was instant. I mean, for me, hearing Bruce and Hank do what they did, adding to my drummer and me, we still didn't have a bass player then, but it just sounded fantastic. And of course, Hank, I, Hank was always saying, oh, look at the Stratocaster, that Telecaster that Bill, Buddy Holly plays. I said, I'll get one. So I paid, I, I imported the first ever Stratocaster into England for Hank to play for me. And it meant that I could give up playing guitar because I was, I was sick and tired of standing behind a microphone like this. But you were, ne you were never taught to play the guitar. You were never taught to sing, were you? No, I wish I had been, though. Even now, when I think about it, I used to have three backing vocal group singers 
who were, or each one of them could see me under the table. Now, you say this, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, put, this is one of the things I'm going to plug, first of all, because this is, this is all in the book as well, this, there's what, great yeah, stories in it. I'm being quick on it, though. But this, I, but you mentioned the fact, this is one of the things I picked up on here, the backing singers and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, if I, if I wrote an autobiography, it would have probably a, a sheep farmer from Lancashire that I met once, and there's a pumpkin guy called Wilfred, which I love, in Barnsley. You've got, you're on stage with Freddie Mercury. On some of these, you know, he wanted to be there. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, do you, you ever? Think, you, you, I mean, look, yeah, all of us who are successful. You're a TV genius now and cooking. <coughs> I don't know. People say to you, "Oh, you're lucky. You got lucky." Yeah. Yes, I think I got lucky. And most of us that actually make it, what happens is we recognise that luck and we grab it by the throat. You certainly got to work at it as well. I'm talking oh, yeah. about working at it. You've got uh, this is album forty. Then this is, I think it's the fifty-fourth. Studio album. So tell us about this thing, because this is this is uh, I mean this is this album here. Uh, I mean this is uh, some of the people who have been to the house. Well, Bonnie Tyler's been here as well because you you well, got some great people. You've, you've you've done stuff on your own on here, but I did. Well, but we did five songs that people would know, two brand new songs that were written for me, and and there are five duets that I have done over the last few years. Bonnie Tyler asked me if I'd sing on her album. And of course, we always say, look, if, yes, I'll sing with you on your album, but can I use it when I've got my album coming out? <laughs> and it was fantastic to sing with her as well. I'm really, I mean, she, she's got the most amazing voice. She sang Happy Birthday to me with the audience in the Albert Hall, and I couldn't hear the audience. <laughs> it was fantastic. And I think I did a gospel song with a friend of mine from way back who's now very successful in the gospel scene in America, which is a big scene there. So it was, and it's a, I think it's an interesting album because it's so diverse. So there's bound to be something that you like on there. Well, we'll start with track one, shall we? Just have a listen to this. Written by a friend of mine. You know when you go through life, you get those pinch yourselves moments. I'm listening to that in my left ear because I've got an earpiece in here. That's normally the director shouting at me, usually the rest <laughs> of the time. And now I've got Cliff Richards singing in stereo in my right ear to that <laughs> track as well, really. <laughs> you still... But the, the great thing, I've met you several times in my life. You, your enthusiasm and your zest for life. It's one of those things that you, you, you be around you and you can only just smile and it just take a little bit away from you. It makes you better. I'm, I can't be the only person well, who said you, that. You can, you're welcome to take some away from me, but I want it back. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but, you know, there where is something... Where do you get that from? Where, is that from your family? You must get that drive. Where, where's... You know, I, will, I, can't, I can't always answer these questions because I don't know. It's just that I remember falling in love with that Elvis record and, and because I followed his music, it led me to Little Richard and Buddy Holly and Ricky Nelson, a whole bunch of people. The fact is that when that music style changed, it was the first really big change in music uh, that I can remember. Before that, it was jazz and Sinatra, and there was nothing wrong with that music. Was that, was that Elvis that, that did that? Was it that was the accumulation of that uh, and the Beatles? Or? It was... Oh, well, Beatles didn't start till four or five years after we did, but took off like, like you could never have believed. Yeah. And so you're creating too, too, too bad, didn't it? We're going to talk about the rest of it in a minute, but okay. I've been told they've got to talk about this steak. I could talk about your career all day long, but this is... we've got to talk about this steak. This is, this is the steak that I wasn't keeping my eye on, oh, you yeah. see? <laughs> this one. Well, um, it's looking good already. Looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Well, you only get to try five, five steaks a year, so I've got to make sure this is a good one, you see? <laughs> now, is that just the oil and the butter? That That's you're the butter. Over? So I've just put it in oil, first of all, yeah. and then we season this. We've got some black pepper on there, so I've yeah, put yeah. salt on it as well. Yeah, I've got it. A little bit of butter gone in there, and then right at the last minute, we then take the butter and then we pop it in the pan like that. Yeah. And then this foams the don't... butter up, you see? Like is that what they call drizzling? It's, it's basting. But, oh, OK, because sometimes on, in a restaurant yeah. you'll see something that's been drizzled. Yeah, tri <laughs> <laughs> it can be that. Hey, you can call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But we're going to lift this out now. Better. And you leave that to rest, just slightly, like that. And then we've got our sauce, which is, I've got in here, which is everything that, while we're talking, I threw in the pan. So we've got the mushrooms, we've got the brandy, we've got the cream, we've got a bit of mustard, a touch of stock, and then you grab yourself a plate. And is it cooked in that period? It's cooked. cooked? Yeah. Fantastic. And you're right, there's a, they've, they've maintained the colour. Yeah. Well, they don't overcook them, that's the key to it. You only get this five times a year, so I'm fingers crossed this one's going to be all right. But... I'm sure it will be. Do so I? there you have it. Cliff Richard, your steak with wild mushrooms. Done. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you.
Well, there you have it. He's ready, look at that. You're ready. Bad. Well, it looks good, you know. I think, I think I'm just going to check to see if it's medium, to be honest I mean, with you. Almost 50 per cent of eating food is that it looks good. It's because it's so... Look at that. I'll perfect. Tell you what. For me, that's perfect. I'll tell you what, medium. That's fantastic. No blood. Yep. Oh. Is that all right? It's fantastic. I'm speechless. See, as well I as a good singer, he's a good actor as well, which we're going to talk about I in a minute. <laughs> I mean, look at that. I mean, I can cut it. I'm cutting it so easily. The butcher can sleep at night. That's the main thing. And so can I. Anyway, uh, there'll be uh, we'll be cooking an incredible plate of cod for Sir Cliff a little bit later, and I've got a masterclass in chocolate mousse coming up shortly. But join me again in a couple of minutes when top baker Richard Bertonay will be taking over the kitchen. You don't want to miss that one. But before you go for your break, mm -hmm. can you just can you, this is this is one of my pride and joys. Can you just sign on that? If that's all right. Yeah, of course. Thank you. To Goodbye. eBay. Anyway, right, nobody's joking. <laughs> <laughs> to me, from you. There you go. I'll let you enjoy your steak now. Sir Cliff Richard, everybody! <laughs> and a side guitar. There'll be more after the break. See you in a bit? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. Now, sadly, to the last part of the show. Right on cue. But I'm delighted to be joined in the outside kitchen again by a true icon of the music world. It's a Cliff Richard, he's here still! <laughs> I, and, and I know you're gonna you love this dish because this is this is another one of your favourites, cod. So yes. I've got this. This my, my fish supplier got me this. This comes from Cornwall. It's a line caught cod. Now just check out that. Unbelievable. Now I was always taught never to eat anything big in my head. <laughs> but this is an exception, but look at this. It's beautiful line caught fish, and I'm going to roast this off in the oven. We've got some, a few little veg. I've got some butter beans over here. I've got a nice bit, a bit of chorizo and a nice little bit of bread, gluten-free bread, that one. Oh, is it? Oh, which really? we're going to fry off as well. But I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to chop this up into pieces. Do you normally cook your fish in the oven? Uh, normally in this. I mean, this pizza oven's fantastic because it cooks in really, really record time, really, with this one. But you don't have to. Conventional oven, about 240 degrees, something uh -huh. like that. Nice hot oven. Because this is going to cook in no more than about three, four minutes in there. What about in the oven, though? In about, f about six to eight minutes oh, in there. Okay. But all we're going to do with that is just grab some olive oil, yep. just a little bit of olive oil, and some butter, salt and pepper, and just roast off this nice bit of fish in the oven, just with a nice little bit of butter with it as well. I don't know what we do with that, olive oil and butter. Exactly. Nice little bit of that. And then some black pepper and some salt. Now, whilst I was reading your biography, and, and, and it was fascinating, I go right back to the beginning because I didn't know you were you, you were brought up in India. I was born there. Yeah, my my parents were born there too. It was it was my grandparents that went there during the British Raj, you know, and it was they went to make their fortune. I don't think either of them did, but had a good life out there. My mum and dad met, and then suddenly there was me, my sisters. Well, so then you moved. Good. You moved it. You were, I mean, living like you say in a council estate, council house. You moved, and then. It's a fascinating story, because I think this is where... I, we had Billy Ocean here at the house last year, and he was saying that, that what got him into music, he went out and bought a piano. He was working in a, in a tailor's in Savile Row, and he saved up enough money to buy himself a piano. You did a similar sort of thing, but with a guitar, didn't you? Or was it your well, fun? I, I got interested in music, as we were saying earlier, because of Elvis, and then I spent the whole time standing in front of a mirror with a, a brush, you know, Pretending it was a guitar and trying, right. to, trying to get the uh, uh -huh -huh, the lip <laughs> curl, but my father actually finally decided he would buy me a guitar. He always said you don't buy things that you can't afford to have, and he did it on the, what we call the never never, so that he paid it off over a period of months. Right. And the irony is that when I went on tour uh, that year, um, my, my my guitar was stolen on the last gig. <sighs> In Bristol, right. so in the end, I ended up paying for the last instalment. I can remember the first song he taught me. It was only three chords: C, F, and G, right. and it was "If I Had the Wings of an Angel <laughs> Over These Prison, All I Would Fly." You know, it was that jerky, but it was a, a good way to start. And that was three chords, and I, I, I know, oh, I know four chords now. But, uh, but if your hero was Elvis, and you managed all the way through, like I said, the late 50s, 60s, 70s, did you ever get to meet him, or was it, did you ever no. pass ever cross? No, no, it never did. It could have done once, but I, I'll tell you why I didn't do it. The first time I tried was I'd gone to, on holiday with some three friends of mine, and 
We were coming back from Italy, so I said, let's go into Germany, and Bad Nauheim is not that far out of our way. That's where Elvis was stationed when he was in the army. Right. So we found the house, you couldn't miss it. It had Elvis scrawled all over it, we love you, I love you, and all that. So I walked up this driveway, and there were three steps up to the front door, I knocked on the door, and this great big guy said, yeah, can I help you? So I said, is Elvis in? And he said, no, he's not. Who are you? I said, well, I, I'm, I'm Cliff Richard. Okay, I'll let him know you called. And I rushed out. And the second time was he was in Vegas. But at that stage, James, he'd probably eaten too much of your food because he was really, <laughs> he was very overweight. And when I got offered the chance to be photographed with him from a newspaper journalist, I said, look, I'd love it, but can't we wait till he makes the movie? When he made a movie, Elvis suddenly looked like the old Elvis. He'd lose the weight, he'd look great, he always looked great. Yeah. Just later that year, Elvis died. And we I got to kick myself. You've done so it's... much in your life as well, because if you were a, if you were a music uh, icon, which you were in the, the 50s and 60s, it, hand in hand with that was movies as well really i mean well that's the first record i ever made and and god bless him but john lennon said before cliff richard and move it there was nothing worth listening to in england and i'm i said thank you john because sometimes journalists say um what's it like that you know people don't think you're cool and i just look at them and say john lennon did i mean who what's cool i'm surprised people say that about you not being cool because you've only got to look I mean, look at your life, look at everything you've gone through, because you've gone from, you know, your first movie, you couldn't even get in to see the, yes. see the premiere. Cause Summer holiday, you couldn't get in. Couldn't get anywhere, no. you, could, you couldn't get anywhere near a no, place. No, I couldn't, they wouldn't let me in. We got, the car came up, and I had my mother with me and my, one of my sisters, I think, and as we got there, the policeman said, please move on. And we said, what, what, but it, this is my, my, my premiere of my show. I don't, I don't care. Move. And I, I went back to my manager's apartment and I watched it on television. It was uh, <laughs> not the film, but the, the, the whole preview. It was uh, it's just one of those things. But, you know, as I say, I don't even think about cool anymore. I either like someone or I don't like them. It's as simple as that. You, wanna, you like someone's record, you buy it. If you don't like it, you don't buy it. But that's the whole thing about this industry, because the whole industry has, has changed massively over the years. Yeah, it has. It's changed... I think it's changed for the worse. I think it's become... Dare I say it's become throwaway sort of stuff, whereas we... I, I think you're right to a great extent. I, I think the technology that came into our lives was an absolute wonder. What I think has changed badly is the, is the relationship between management and artists. Sometimes people just want an artist. You know, nowadays, if you have a, a record, number one, you go and make another record. If it doesn't get to number one, very often you're not even re-signed by the record company. But I've been mean, said to you, I mean, while well, the camera wasn't even running, you say it's difficult, more difficult now because you're competing against... Who have you got to compete against? You had 25 top-selling, top 10 singles back-to-back. Well, do, you, I mean, do you need to prove it? Do you need to prove it anymore? No, I don't need to prove I'm, it. I'm going to get on to the food in a minute, but I'm more interested <laughs> in this. No, <laughs> I, no, I don't need to prove it anymore. I'm very fortunate in that the, even, you know, the BBC at the moment, my new single, is in their C list. And on the, in, the, in the BBC around the country, I'm on the B list. What you have to try and do is slip yourself up to the A list where you get played all the time. Right. So yes. now, at the moment, these new young singers who are brilliant, I think, people like Sam Smith and uh, Sheeran, they're all brilliant. And, but we can't compete with them. I'd like to find out whether they could compete with us. And then if they beat us sometimes, that's good. We might beat them sometimes. It's interesting, that. Look, we're right. going to leave it at that, really. I'm just going to just plate this up, just to finish this off. So we've got our beans I've cooked with chorizo. I've got some herbs in there. Right at the last minute. This is the, this is the key to the last minute. It's a little bit of sherry vinegar. Oh. Just okay. a touch of sherry vinegar. It brings it all alive. Okay, I'll try and, and then what I've done with the bread... As I've tried not to burn it, which is not burnt, is I've got some nice little croutons, big chunky sort ah, of croutons. We've got some of garlic. That, of we've got that, some... that gluten-free bread. Gluten-free bread. We've got some parsley in there, that kind of stuff. You know, it, gluten doesn't bother me. It's the wheat that bothers me, so I always order gluten-free. If one thing about gluten-free bread is that it doesn't have wheat. But this is by choice, isn't it? You... Oh, that's by choice, yeah. They, well, everything's by choice. I mean, I chose to do follow this regime, and it's worked for me. I'm sort of the same weight now that I was when I was 25 or something. Uh, I'm very similar. 
I never knew you when you were 25. I, uh, months I was talking about. I was this weight <laughs> when I was months. <laughs> right, we're going to then mix in our bit of bread. So this is the garlic, the bread and everything else. And what you do is you take... Is it one clove of garlic or do you use just a Just one clove of garlic. OK. You and that you chopped it up? Yeah, chop it up. You just sprinkle that on the top. All right. But just over the top like that. And then, finally, we'll get our piece of cod. You're right, that right. looks really good. Bit of lemon zest over the top. Well, there you have it. I could talk to you all weekend, all week, but... Fantastic. That looks wonderful. There you have it. My roast cod with lemon, chorizo and beans with a little bit of fried croutons over the top. That's Cliff Richard, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Gonna grab a bit of this fish to oh, look at this. You see, it cooks in really, really quick time. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Now, I've done a bit for everybody else, but fish is very good for me. Ah, oh, the cod is particularly the cod yeah. when you get absolutely it's one of those beneficial foods. And you see how quick it was to cook? I did, yeah. Matt? I can't believe it. No bother about I still can't months. believe that you can talk and cook. Oh, you have to practice that. Maybe I can play... I've been, I've been winging it for 28 years. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> Nobody's found out yet, but... Anyway, so Cliff Richard, everybody! <laughs> thank you very much for coming to the house. Thank Legend, you. right there. Right, that's all we've got time for today. A massive thank you to my guests, Paul Griffin, Richard Bertonet, the brilliant Sat Baines, and, of course, Sir Cliff Richard. <laughs> Now, don't miss next week's show when I'll be joined in the kitchen by James Tanner uh, and Sophie Ellis-Bexter will be here as well. I'll see you back here, same time, same place, next Saturday morning. Until then, take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Cheers, fella. Cheers, James. Cheers. We're back at the castle tonight for all the unseen bits from their second week in camp. It's I'm a Celebrity.